Thank you. Hello, everybody. Um, I will try to summarize a new part of the VT library, which is called VTDBO, in uh, around 15 minutes. I will mostly show some code examples, uh, since I think that the real benefit or the real added value of this uh, library is how you can concisely interface with a database from C++ code. And I think the most important aspect there is just how uh, intuitive the code works. So why would we want to have an ORM for C++? Well, not only because there is one for every language out there, and really a good a library is lacking for C++, so that, that would be one reason that doesn't make a lot of sense. But the real reason is that we want to simplify our development. And, and you have to keep in mind that using SQL, I don't think it's very difficult. SQL is a very simple language, and so we should make sure that we don't complicate uh, using SQL. But what makes SQL a bit uh, hard to use from a programming language is that you have to tediously map every field uh, from your uh, relational tables onto uh, members of your classes, and you want to keep, uh, you want to have a way of traversing relationships in your uh, relational database using concepts that you're familiar from or familiar with in C++, which is using pointers and uh, collections. So in order to keep it simple and to keep it very intuitive, we decided that we don't want to use any code generation because code generation usually is a step where you have very little control over, so our library doesn't use any code generation. We also don't have any XML mapping definitions. I think adding an extra XML file separate from your relational uh, database schema and separate from your C++ code only complicates things. So we also decided to avoid any macro hacks. So the whole library doesn't have any macro which tries to hide the C++ from you. You get exposed to all the C++ that is there. And of course, we try to be concise because we want to actually save you from typing and save you from making errors rather than making things more complicated. So this whole um, effort started in only in September last year. So that's when we got the idea that this should be possible in C++. And we had a first release in December, and it's already being used online in our, uh, in our uh, uh, homepage, where we use a blog that is implemented using DBO. And that blog already got slash dotted, so, and it survived it very well. So I think it's already been a bit tested as well. So, going straight to the code, this is how you would uh, map fields in uh, DBO onto a, a table. So, imagine that you have a, an entity user, which you, where you want to store user information. And in C++, you want to describe this user class using, oh, using uh, uh, three fields. For example, there's a string where we keep the name. There is a role, which is an enum, and there is a, some karma that we assign to every user. And the only thing that DBO adds to your class definition, and you can use public or private fields or whatever, but just to keep all my examples simple, I'm going to use public fields, but you can, obviously you can uh, hide them and use uh, accessors. So the only thing that you have to add that is DBO specific to your class definition is a persist method which takes a class uh, an action class is a template argument, and in that uh, persist method you will simply declare how you map particular information from your class onto uh, fields in your database. So once you've done that for a particular class, you can uh, use it with a database. So currently, so here I'm going to use our uh, SQLite backend, uh, which is a backend in DBO, which is basically the only backend we currently have. Um, everything in DBO will um, happen within the scope of a session, and I will later talk a bit about why that is the, the case. So in our, in our session, we're going to assign it to this uh, backend connection, and then here is the actual mapping statement. So you just say, I want to map the class user onto the table user. 
So this, uh, together with the information on the previous slides, provides all the mapping information. And then one thing that we could already do is ask the session to create the tables in our database. And this will uh, execute some SQL that looks like this based on the information from your class. So this is just to, uh, uh, a complete example. The previous class uh, declaration together with this statements, you don't need any other uh, code generation, no other tool, no XML mapping, no uh, um, um, build uh, time information. This will just work. So obviously, we do not only want to create a table, but we also want to see how we can use uh, the interaction between our uh, database and our uh, uh, program. So here, we will persist a new object. So um, everything will happen within the scope of a transaction. So, uh, so this is a transaction boundary. And then here, we simply create our new object. So because we used public members, we're going to just assign some information there. And then here, we're going to add our user to our uh, session that we previously created. And this uh, statement will, when we commit a transaction, will insert the, uh, let's see, will insert uh, our user into the database. And we are going to keep track of a user that is stored in the database using this special smart pointer class, DBO pointer. And this pointer class not only allows us to use it as a regular pointer, but it also provides some meta information on our object that has been saved. And for example, one of these is the database ID that was assigned to this object. So then we can keep track of that for uh, other users. Same thing for updating an object. So again, we're going to do this within a transaction. So suppose that we have some DBO pointer that we accessed or that we retrieved or that we just saved from the database, then we can just uh, inspect some property. So here we see the smart pointer use. Uh, it behaves like a regular pointer to, for reading information. However, to modify information, we use the modify uh, method, which is available on our smart pointer, to uh, access a non-writable uh, uh, copy of our uh, object. And so this modify operator will just mark the object as dirty, and the next time you, transmit, you, you commit your transaction, it's going to flush these uh, modifications to the database. So this is, again, the SQL that will be generated. So in our SQL statements, you will see uh, the typical uh, SQL uh, syntax for prepared statements. That's because all of our uh, generated SQL will use prepared statements and will use the real binding uh, methods uh, that are available in, our, in your database layer. Uh, same thing for queries. So again, within a transaction, this is how, for example, we would find a single user with name Joe. So from our session, we will use the find method, which is templatized with the class of uh, the objects that we want to retrieve. And here, we can specify the remaining part of the SQL query, so everything after the uh, select from part, you, you can specify here. And here we say where we want to have a name. Uh, again, we use uh, prepared statements, and we will bind the uh, parameter Joe to this first question mark. Since we expect only one particular uh, user that matches this query, we already uh, coerce the result into a DBO pointer. Uh, if, you ha if this query would have resulted in many results, you would, it would throw an exception. If there is no Joe uh, with this, uh, that matches this criteria, it will return a null DBO pointer, which just behaves like a normal null pointer. Same thing for uh, retrieving a collection. So here we store the result in a DBO collection. And a DBO collection, together with DBO pointer, the two main smart, or the two um, classes in uh, DBO that you will need to use to interact with uh, uh, database objects. So let's say that we find all the users with karma less than uh, five. So same thing, we uh, bind five to this positional uh, parameter, and we, re we retrieve the result in this DBO collection. And this DBO collection really acts like an STL collection. 
So we can use uh, boost for each to iterate on all results and print some information on it. So again, we commit our transaction. So in this case, this will not do really anything, but the database uh, mandates that you do ev everything within the scope of a transaction, or actually our uh, DBO does that. All right. So to give some more information on these two uh, classes, pointer and collection. So pointer is really a smart uh, pointer class for objects, and it facilitates a number of uh, um, um, features uh, for our class. So um, an important thing of the smart pointer class is that it does memory management. Since in SQL, you don't really have a uh, good hierarchy of this object has ownership of or this um, table has ownership of records of this table. So this is not really part of SQL, but this is how you would typically uh, uh, implement it in C++ if you wouldn't use smart pointers. But with smart pointers, you don't have to bother about when a particular object should be deleted. The, date, the, the, the DBO will do that for you as soon as no references are no longer uh, held in, in uh, your uh, session. So this uh, memory management works in conjun conjunction with the session object. There is uh, write access using the uh, modify method which marks an object dirty. And then there are several persistence met uh, methods available on this smart point so you can explicitly flush a particular object. You can remove uh, the object which makes it transient again. So the object is removed from the database but you're in-memory object can still be used, and maybe you want to resave it later. Uh, you can reread the latest uh, database uh, version from a particular uh, object, and we already saw how we could use the ID. So, same thing for a collection. Uh, collection is an STL-like container for query results, and its iterators implement the lowest form of requirements for an STL iterator, which is an input iterator. So the more interesting part, or the actual more useful part of DBO is how you can map relations. And here we show how you can map a many-to-one relation. So suppose that we want to allow our user to author posts, for example, in a blog. Most, most examples are about blogs these days, so this is not an exception. Um, so what we do in our class user we're going to add a DBO collection of DBO pointers to posts. And in our persistence method, we will say that a user has many posts. And our many posts, so posts, many to one user. And user will be the field that corresponds to this uh, uh, user. And so in class post, we're simply going to say, so a post is owned by a user. Here again, we use the, the DBO pointer to just have a reference to the user. And then in our persistence method, we will state that this post belongs to a particular user. User, So obviously, this string and this string has to match. And that's how the library knows that they are um, the two ends of the relation. But other than that, there's nothing special about this. So after you've done this, you can just assign values to the user. You can inspect the user. You can um, iterate through all the posts that, that um, uh, belong to a user. And uh, the database or the DBO layer will generate the necessary SQL to manipulate and to interact with these uh, two um, fields in your classes. So this is almost the same. So it's even if you look at the effect, it's quite nice. So you can, I can skip most of the uh, information because it's actually the same to do a many-to-many -many relationship. However, here, obviously, this is going to be symmetrical. So here, instead of um, a pointer, we also have a collection. So now we will say that a post can have many tags, and tags can be reused over posts. So we have just a collection of tags. We have just a collection of posts. And here we say that a post has many tags, and there are many too many tags uh, to a post. And then this particular field now has the meaning of the name of the join table that we're going to use in our database to connect these two information. So here, you see exactly the same. So how does this work? Um, all of the magic really happens within this persist method. And 
The library will uh, define several actions. Uh, at the moment, there are nine to ten actions defined by the library, and each action is responsible for a particular uh, well, action. So there is uh, uh, one action that is responsible to load an event. There is one for saving an object. There is one uh, to, to examine the transaction come out, outcome and so on. And so the DBO layer will visit your objects using this persist method, and it will pass the right action that is applicable to what it wants to achieve. There are also traits classes specialized for, specialized for field types, and we will avoid any loops of pointer objects and relations, and this is how our shared pointer uh, memory management will work. So there are some other features which I will briefly uh, list. So we already, I already told you that we were using prepared statements throughout. Queries can also be uh, more complex than the ones that we showed. You can have composite results, and it works together with a boost tuple to, result, to store the results in. Currently, we only have a SQLite uh, backend, and I, I welcome any questions about that. Um, there's built, in, uh, um, uh, there's built in an optimistic locking scheme uh, for concurrency. It's dual licensed. And it's part of Witty. And if you want to see more information or a more extended tutorial, I recommend to just Google for it on the, or go to this uh, URL on our website. And thank you. Eight minutes. Uh, one quick question, if anybody. Otherwise, no. oops. Okay. <laughs>